Hello Robert and Will Crafters, welcome back. Really excited today because today I'm going to be teaching you my very first tutorial on how I create my corrugated metal panels. So I actually make these out of aluminium, aluminium sheet and I think it's the best thing to do because you can actually um, create scratches and dinks and it tears and rips and moves in the same way as the real thing. So it's absolutely perfect as uh, the base material to be painting over the top of and getting all these lovely weather effects and stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to be taking you through today. All the lovely steps, uh, really in depth detail on how to achieve that kind of thing. So when I started out I was using just pop cans for this. Now one of the things that you need to uh, be thinking about if you are going to be using uh, this trash material is you're going to want to be taking this paint off the top. If you leave the paint on when you start scratching through or if any of the paint unfortunately uh, falls off, flecks off or whatever, then you don't want this horrible anodized shiny red or blue or whatever colour is underlying on the can. So the, the best way of removing that is to actually put, uh, I normally put four cans as they are, just like that, in a pressure cooker with a little bit of water in the bottom. I will cook it for around about 35 minutes to 45 minutes and then once they come out, once it's been steamed, you can just take some acetone, make sure you glove up because this stuff's really lethal, uh, get some acetone, put it on a little bit of a cloth and you'll just be able to literally just wipe off the paint off the top, it's, it's, uh, it's like magic, it's brilliant stuff. Um, obviously pretty smelly chemicals, not very nice, um, but it's the, it's the best way of getting a, a nice clean sheet of aluminium. So that's going to be what you're going to be wanting to do uh, if you're going to be making just a few of these from home, um, I would recommend. So what purpose then are we going to be making these types of corrugated metal panels for? Well, they're pretty versatile. You can use it as a barrier, so you can just stand it up and it can be a, a nice barrier, um, some kind of line of sight blocking. Um, you can use it as uh, just debris, you know, you can just put it on the, on the ground, the battle floor, gives it a little bit of visual interest. Uh, you can even just cut little bits of this off and put it onto the bases of your miniatures or lent up against uh, some kind of building structure or something like that. Uh, they can also be used as a building tool, so you might want to use it as the side panel of a building or you might want to use it as some kind of roofing structure, um, some kind of you know, sort of industrial roofing, that kind of thing. Uh, you probably won't want to kink it up quite as much as I have if you're going to be using it for that, or maybe you do. It's, it's up, to, up to you on the visual appearance really and, and how much weathering you want to apply to it. I'm going to be applying quite a heavy weathering today just to show you the techniques and how I go through that particular process. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, be sure to subscribe to my channel and also make sure you ring that little bell in the corner which appears as well and that means that you'll get nice notifications of new tutorials and new videos that I'll be bringing out. And then last but not least, I have set up a Patreon page on patreon.com. Uh, that's gonna help me to still keep creating these in-depth tutorials and videos. There's links in the description down below and also you can reach it from the main page of my channel. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy watching this. Okay, let's get into this. So I'm taking a pop can. This is probably the most easiest material for you to get hold of, to get an aluminium sheet. So either a razor saw or if you've got a rotary tool, you can cut off the top and then also the bottom and that's going to give you a loop of aluminium which you'll then want to split down the sides to give you that nice sheet. Because I do this as a manufacturing process, I'm creating lots of these to sell as part of my business, I have a aluminium coil and that is about 110 centimeters in width and a corrugating machine. This is a green stuff wheel corrugating machine. It's it's decent. 
I didn't know any better when I first bought this. It's quite expensive. If you look on eBay, you can actually pick up uh, what they call a toothpaste tube squeezer, and you can get them for two or three pounds. So I'm just feeding it through into my guillotine here. It's only a millimeter thick, so it's really easy to cut. Just slide it through into the guillotine, and my guillotine's 15 centimeters, and I've just measured another five on the cutting board, so it brings up to 20 centimeters in length. There we go, perfect sheet. So with it being 110 millimeters in width, the corrugating machine is actually only able to accept up to 80 millimeters. So we've got quite a lot of overhang there. What I've started doing now is, there you go, 110 on the dot. What I've started doing now is cutting this straight down the middle to have 55 millimeters, two sheets of 55 millimeters by 200 millimeters. You can put both of those into the corrugating machine, stacked on top of each other, and I'll make sure it's nice and straight, and then really cut in to make sure I've got a good grip and then you just start turning the gears and you get your corrugation so when you've done it the corrugation is really quite tight you get a very tight angle so what I'm doing here is just prising it apart a little just so we get a nicer angle on the corrugation for the scale that we're looking for and it also gives us a little bit more length so it brings it to about 17 and a half, 18 centimeters so you can see you get quite a bit of gain there and I'll just do the same with the other one. There we go, two sheets, 55 millimeters width by around about 180 millimeters in length. Now, once you've got your corrugations, you want to prime it. You need to use a very specific type of primer. It needs to be an etch primer for aluminium so it doesn't come back off again. This properly cuts into the metal with a chemical process and I tried to speed this up to crack on with the video and uh, used a heat gun to, to uh, try and speed up the drying process and actually did quite a lot of bubbling of the paint and I quite actually like that. I think that could be a, a new technique where it's bubbled up. Once you've got your etch primer on there you can of course spray the um, any colour that you want your corrugation base colour to be. So green here, that's Def Guard Green as a, an example. What I've put on my table now is what I call my, my messy MDF board. So I can just do as much as I want on here. And this is a mix of my own typhus corrosion, I guess is the, uh, the best kind of solution to, uh, to give it. So it's got um, chinchilla dust, it's got some medium in there, it's got a bit of brown paint, a bit of grey paint and it gives me a nice textured typhus corrosion kind of feel to it and I'm just tearing up um, some artist's sponge here and I'm just stippling around here so what I've, what I've tried to do here is create a, like a vignette essentially so I want a dark brown around all the edges of the sheet I'm now going in with some sterling mud and just applying it in some of the places where I want a real build up of texture. This is going to give me a real sort of gritty, very corroded kind of feel to parts of it. And you can see that there. And I, I hit it with the heat gun again and now I'm just giving it a little bit of a knock back with wire brush helps to blend it into the grey a bit more and just takes off any of the real sort of stupidly large lumps so we get a nice texture. So I've gone and round and done that and then you can see we've got a nice texture on there now. Hog hair brush. Recommend a hog hair brush for um, stippling 
and its rigidity when using these AK interactive um, enamel rust paints. So I'm going in first with a dark rust which is a very red maroony colour. It will dry a lot more pastely but you can see it's out the pot it's a very red maroon colour. So I'm loading up the brush with that. And following the vignette I'm going to be going around the edges onto the brown of the typhus corrosion and the sterling mud that we put down. Not covering all the brown but I'm putting on a fair bit of red and I'm also when my brush is getting dry I'm just stippling the middle there as well. So this is the medium rust compounds now from AK Interactive. Much more orangey or ochre kind of colour and I'm going in a little bit tighter from the vignette circle and also putting a little bit in the middle a bit more than the previous. Now this is the light rust deposits from AK Interactive, very yellow colour. Again all of these are going to dry much more pastely what's been applied. The yellow again going in even tighter from the vignette and into the middle we're not using a lot of this, it's, we're just using very selective amounts because it's a very strong yellow colour and there you can see it's it's been dried and I'm going with the wire brush again just to, because it's, it, it's very um, on the surface at the moment and I want to blend it in back with the grey, knock it back a bit so I'm just being quite careful with the wire brush but just going over the whole thing just to blend it in and you can see that's much nicer blend now with the grey base colour these pencils are from AK Interactive as well. I, I really like the AK Interactive um, weathering mediums that they've got. Um, not sponsored at all. Just really enjoy using these these particular um, tools for um, creating rusting effects. So with this one, I'm using uh, a brown. I'm going in quite dry at the moment. You can use these pencils both wet and dry. And then this is the rust and streaking effects set where you get some really nice oranges and ochres and stuff like that. This is being applied wet, going into some of the recesses, um, and then while it's wet, I'm just going in with a much smaller hog hair brush and just moving some of that pigment around. A bit more orange of a different colour, light orange there, and again just moving the pigments around and we get this nice sort of streaking effect like we've had a little bit of rainfall. Now back with my own typhus corrosion flavoured mix up I am now going back around the very edges of the vignette back over some of that red and just really darkening up the the edges and the corners. Again moving it around with the dry brush getting a nice blend and a few streaks coming down to give us a real nice rusty flavour. Now this was the blue that I'm using from AK Interactive and you can see all I'm doing with this is with a light blue and then a dark blue it's just putting a few lines I'm just dragging it across the lines and that gives us kind of like a paint transfer. Now I'm using a needle file just to poke at and scratch up some of the surface just to give it a few dinks and dents here and there just doing it by feel and it just gives us a few scratches taking some open cell polystyrene just a little bit of packaging and you can see I'm just placing it on top of there what I'm going to be doing with this is actually using that needle file again to punch some holes through the metal really easy to do because it's nice and soft even with the tin cans and just punching it through be careful with your fingers here make sure they're out of the way, don't want any accidents and these are going to be mimicking bullet holes so I'm putting it sort of halfway, maybe two thirds of the way up from the top and just punching in a few holes where I think there will be some bullet fire scatter Now the 
beauty with this is once you've got your bullet holes in punched in one way when you turn it over by the way you would paint both sides I've just uh, not done that for ease just take, removing some of the uh, residue there and you can see how the bullet holes I've got that impression of where they've been fired through from the other side now here I'm just moulding the metal with my hands a little just battering it up and taking a pair of clippers old clippers and just cutting a few bits away and ripping some of the edges just to make it really worn and get in some nice shapes and wearing effects there and there you have it a finished piece good height for the miniatures looking totally battered as if it's been there for years and years millennia even for our games of 40k um, drop zone whatever futuristic or modern day warfare so there we are then the final piece how much fun was that really enjoyed making that so you can see it's it's just a uh, once you've got the techniques down it's it's doesn't take long at all it's it's a really nice little process now I do productize these items you get um, for 5.99 you get two of these sheets painted both sides with all of the weathering and stuff like that and I sell those on my website immersive-world-crafter.com and also over on eBay and my other stores such as Etsy so there's lots of different places where you can find them um, I believe they're also on Amazon as well on my Amazon store so yeah have a have a hunt around and um, find out where to buy them if it's something that you would like on your battlefield but you know you might already have loads of terrain projects or lots of miniatures to paint I know I've got plenty of miniatures to paint like every other hobbyist so if you want me to be producing these for you uh, I think that's a really fair price two of these weathered to that kind of level for 5.99 so if you would like me to produce some of these for you please get in touch and either in the comments below or you know help me out across the interwebs and I will uh, get these done for you it's been a pleasure I really enjoyed making this first tutorial I hope you enjoyed it and as I said at the start if you have enjoyed this please subscribe please hit the little bell as well so that I can be ringing in your pocket when I send out new notifications and also please consider the patron thing as well becoming one of my patrons on patreon.com even if you just provide one dollar per video that's really going to help keep the lights on and help me produce more of these stunning videos with in-depth tutorials for you and also share with your other hobbyists get the word out I would love more people to be joining the channel and seeing the sort of stuff that I'm doing and that will make it all the worthwhile so until the next time see you later